the message on the level. Great. Hi, everyone. Uh, today is the March DSC community call, and it's a special day today because we have Jody who's joined us. Um, so the plan today is to uh, give as much time as Jody uh, wants or needs uh, because she's got another meeting just after that. So I uh, will be very brief at the beginning and then we will go back to um, opening uh, for questions and um, and then go for, with the rest of the planning. If we've got time at the end, I will do a demo of Test Kitchen, but that's definitely not the priority. Uh, be, just after Jody, we will ask uh, Shane Wheeler, who's the uh, documentation guy, who's done a lot of work on the uh, DSC documentation, and he will tell us what he's been doing, where he's at, and what's the plan uh, in the future. Um, but right now, hi Jody, who are you? Hi there. Um, it's nice to meet all of you. Uh, my name is Jody Boone. I'm uh, the new PM for guest configuration. Um, I'm fairly fairly new to Microsoft, um, and know that I have some big shoes to fill. Uh, following following Sir Michael Green, so really looking forward to working with all of you. And um, yeah, I guess I, I haven't been to this call before, but would just love to know the best ways to really like open different feedback channels and and get to know all of you and get to know um, a lot of your history with the product as well. Um, I think Gail just put my my new Twitter page on on the screen, so feel free to feel free to reach out on there, and I'll try to uh, do as best of a job I can to uh, to screen your questions, comments, and concerns. Um, yeah, and you'll be seeing at these meetings going forward. So um, yeah, so it's great great to meet all of you. And I didn't have a specific presentation prepared right now, but I could, if there were topics of interest, try to get something together for the next call. But yeah, just as an intro. Uh, hi. <laughs> oh. Thank, thank you hi, for Jenny. joining. Um, I, I asked her, I don't know, maybe a couple of hours ago, like very early in the morning, I just say, hey, by the way, we've got the DC community called, would you mind joining and, you know, uh, presenting yourself. So thank you very much for coming, uh, especially with the last minute request. So um, can you maybe um, tell us, so you started uh, not long ago and uh, is there, things that people should expect? What's the plan? Is there people working on it? What are they working on? You know, what is the relationship maybe with the DSC? They have a good understanding yeah. of, of like Mike already presented guest config, but maybe a bit a bit of a summary. Yeah, definitely. So um I won't go I won't go too far back then if Michael's already given everybody a bit of a background, but um, as a lot of you might be aware, we're currently in our public preview for our enforcement mode, as we're calling it uh, set scenario. So this is something we're still hoping to GA in spring of 2022, albeit a little bit uh, later spring than we had originally planned. Um, but we're we're well underway to still meeting to still meeting that deadline, which is exciting. Um, we are currently working to try to like reach a certain level of feature parity with a lot of the most popular DSC features um, into the guest configuration extension um, to move things more and more onto Azure as well. Um, and a couple of updates. The uh, yeah, that's sort of that's sort of our that's sort of our main our main update. Um, we're we're yeah we're so would love like again some feedback from from the community as to like what features do you think would be the most impactful that we could try to bring into to bring into guest config and yeah just like open up a dialogue again on on my twitter and um we're looking into better ways and better channels to be able to um like interact with the community directly so that's that's something that that is on our that is on our plate right now for sure yes th there's a lot of work going on and a lot of people are working hard to, to hit that you know that ga uh, uh soft deadline i would say to go ga as soon as possible uh, and there's a lot of like it's about you know getting some bugs on some you know some features and some things done uh, by then um but we can open like if anyone has questions for jody while she's around uh feel free to unmute and ask your question and uh and she will try to answer i'll find the answer later any question for her or any generic questions about guest config. If you're not sure what guest config is, feel free to ask the question. If you don't see the relationship with DSC, then you can ask the question as well. And if you're too shy, you can just type it in the chat as well. Yep, definitely. And again, I'm plugging my new my new Twitter. So again, if nothing is on your mind right now, feel free to 
reach reach out reach out following the following the call if you have anything that anything that comes to your mind. Yeah, she's she had to recreate an account today just to make sure yeah. everyone can reach out. And I just put the link on the chat if you want to follow her to start with, and also if you want to reach out. That's the way. All right, thank you. Um, uh, I'm sure there there might be questions coming up. Um. Uh, very soon. So we'll give, uh, we'll introduce um, Sin Willow, who's the uh, documentation guy, I would say, so to simplify, and maybe you can present himself and then tell us um, about DSC and the changes. Those two are very related. So maybe you can both explain, you know, what's the difference between the DSC, guest config, and from the doc sites, um, who do you work with and how do you work about this? Okay, so uh, hi, I'm Sean Wheeler. Um, I am the docs guy. Um, we recently added a new member to the docs team, uh, Mikey Lombardi. Several of you in the DSC community may <laughs> know Mikey. Uh, he comes to us from Pub Puppet, where he did a bunch of work on um, converting DSC resources to Puppet resources. So um, we're going to be leaning on him for helping us with DSC documentation going forward. Let me share my screen here real quick <clears throat> and talk about the um, documentation. Um, so uh, a while ago, I moved the DSC documentation out of the regular PowerShell documentation uh, location. So we have an entry here in the table of contents for it, but there's just this one page and it talks about how it's been moved. So there's a link here. Also, if you're <clears throat> on any of the PowerShell uh, documentation sites, the level two navigation here, uh, there's a link to the DSC content right there. So I'll open that up. Um, one of the big reasons for moving the documentation is that, um, as you can see here, the the PowerShell documentation, um, we have version selectors based on the version of PowerShell. Um, but now that DSC has been decoupled from PowerShell, no longer ships in PowerShell, um, we wanted to be able to represent the DSC versions separately. So now we have uh, the documentation in uh, that's version selectable for the version of DSC you're using. The version 1.1 content uh, is the old documentation that you're probably used to seeing, um, you know, a list of all the concepts <clears throat> and the reference for the built-in resources uh, in the old module and uh, the commandlets in the PS desired state configuration module. Um, so that's all there. The uh, these version numbers are based on the version of the PS de desired state configuration module. So um, you'll see here that um, there's far fewer number of uh, commandlets here for the uh, version two. We are working on adding more um, content here for version two. Uh, I should say Michael Green mostly is working on this. Um, and uh, for version three, um, Michael Green has added a few new articles here. Um, version three is the version that's um, really targeted at working in Azure Guest Config. Um, so that's um, what this documentation mostly uh, talks about. There are plans to try to create documentation um, to cover hybrid scenarios um, and speak to the limitations of what's doable and not doable. Um, also, uh, documentation plan for um, discussing class-based resources in more detail. Um, but we've got a lot of work ahead of us. And uh, yes, um, yeah. I'll just leave it that. <laughs> leave it at that. <laughs> There's a lot of work. 
and I believe Jody also has uh, some, uh, like maybe not on the DS uh, on the uh, PowerShell DSC side, but there's a lot of documentation that is uh, which is planned. Let's put it like this: which is planned, work in progress. I don't know how far you got, but can you maybe explain um, between uh, DSC and uh, guest config? You know, what is the relationship between the two? The, and I mainly talk about the guest config agent and the PSDSC that uh, Sean has been talking about. Yeah, definitely. So a lot of the documentation that we're working on updating um, in the guest config space is mainly around being able to create custom content. So right now we have a list of um, like built in configurations that you're able to um, apply and audit at scale through Azure policy. But we do also have the ability to create custom configurations, which our agent is able to apply and enforce in a similar way. Um, what's required to do this, however, is um, our DSC resources as well as PowerShell um, as well as PowerShell scripts uh, to be able to um, for the agent to be able to apply these custom configurations. So there are quite a few uh, steps, and right now the document set um, that we have put together for this uh, links between sort of um, many different many different repositories. So we're trying to put together um, we're trying to put together a more concise tutorial type of view to be able to. Um, take a customer to the beginning and the from the beginning to the end of how to create a custom configuration using the required DSC resources and guest config command led experiences um, both on Windows and Linux. So that's something that's in the works as well. Thank you. And, and something very important when you are using guest configuration, uh, there's different versions based on whether you're on so different version of the PSDSC module. So the documentation that uh, uh, we see on the on the screen right now. And uh, on Windows, uh, you have a different version, a slightly different version than what you have on Linux. You can write uh, DSC resources that would be your base uh, for your configuration that is then used for creating the guest configuration package. And then um, the behavior might change a little bit based on the version you have. So on Windows, it's still used on, tell me if I'm wrong, uh, but PSDSC version 205. And on, uh, on Linux, it would be using the uh, the PSDSC module uh, 300 beta 1. Is so, that correct? Or is it just for the compilation? Um, Windows PowerShell 5.1 ships with the 1.1 version of PS Desired State Configuration. Um, prior to 7 .2, PowerShell 7.2, we shipped uh, a 2.0 version of PS Desired State Configuration. With 7.2, that was removed it's now installable from the gallery, so you can install the 2.0.5 version <clears throat> if you want. Um, it doesn't have all the same commandlets that the prior version does, so it depends what you're trying to do. Um, and then the uh, version 3 is a preview build. It's on the gallery. Um, you can install it with allow uh, preview. Uh, what was it? allow pre-release. Um, it has the same set of uh, limited set of commandlets. Um, and so you just need to, to pick the right one for the target environment you're in. Yes, but when you're using guest configuration, guest configuration comes with its own version of PowerShell and whether if you are on um, if you're on Windows or if you're on Linux, there's a small different there's a different version and uh, the Windows one is slightly different than the Linux one for now. And that's why yeah. and, and that's why there's, there's a slight difference. And, and that's why the Windows one is using uh, 205 because it's uh, using PowerShell 7. One two or seven one three. I I don't know anymore. Uh, thank you, uh, Joel. <laughs> I don't know anymore. But uh, it's using one of those. And then on Linux, it's using seven dot two or something like this. Uh, one of the seven dot two. So um, it's class based only on Linux, and um, and it's using the PSDSC module three zero zero beta beta one. I think the version is. Yeah. So um, um, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. I was just going to say um, I wanted to point out um, for those interested in the docs, I meant to show this. There's an edit button here in the top corner, and if you click on the edit button, it'll take you to the GitHub repo where the docs live. So 
um, you're open to contribute uh, or file issues um, on the documentation as well. Um, the way this is organized in the top level folder here, um, these are the commandlet reference folders for each version. So if I drill in here, here, you'll see the markdown for each of the commandlets. And under Docs Conceptual, you'll find the documentation um, that's been added there for um, for those conceptual articles. So looking at <clears throat> looking at the Docs site, everything there's a line right here above reference. Everything above the line is what we call conceptual documentation. That's in the Docs Conceptual folder, and everything below the line is uh, commandlet reference. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have questions and uh, you can unmute and ask uh, Jody or Shin. Uh, um, Daniel, do you want to ask your question? Yeah, hey Jody, um, welcome to the team. Um, with the GC set mode you're, you guys are planning on releasing, um, will we be able to use the DSC community resources to form a set or is it going to be limited to a specific you know, are there going to be specific requirements on the set? Um, I think I think the answer is sometimes. Let me look into what those specific limitations might be um, before I get back to you with a super specific answer. Uh, Gail, if you would, if you know a little bit more on the Linux side for that, I might I might actually defer to you for this one. So, um, can you so? Can you use uh, the DSC community resources? Most of the time, yes. There's, as Joel has found out uh, today, there's a, some limitation which is inherent, I would say, to the uh, PSDSC module that we discussed. Um, and, and also the version, and also the version uh, that you may be, um, the, measure, the version of PowerShell that might be in use uh, within the GC agent. So um, one of those is, uh, um, sorry. So, so one of those is when you when you want to. So some of the you know in PowerShell, if you use a, a PowerShell seven, and if you want to use some old module, it will just automatically use implicit remoting to execute uh, whatever is needed within the PowerShell.exe. But the version of PowerShell within the GC agent. As you know, as this uh, feature, the implicit remoting removed, just so that the package uh, is uh, smaller in size, so it's easier to install the agent. So at the moment, if you use something that uses um, implicit remoting, and that's usually things with a uh, uh, DSIM, or uh, I can't remember what other uh, what other type of uh, DSC resources, but there would be some limitations. If you use a MOF based resource, usually written by the community. I would say there's a good chance that they would work. If you use a binary resource like the fire resource, that one would not work. Mm, okay, right. Okay, that, uh, that's useful to know. I want, just wondering if there was anything we need to do to change the resources to get them to work, or if you know we'll we'll start get questions around. Hey, I want to use, I want to set a VLAN up <laughs> for whatever reason. Um, that should work. So unless you have these kind of problems. Um, that should work. If so, the best way to test the the first way to test initially is to um, test within PowerShell and then make sure you have the right versions. So if you do that on Linux, make sure you test that on PowerShell uh, 7.2 with the PSDSC module three something. And then in um, if you test that on Windows, then you need to have PowerShell 7.13, I believe, with the PSDSC module two or five. Are there any enforce mode scenarios that we're that we will sort of well that'll be released first or example scenarios and force mode example scenarios yeah so there is already one available that um sets and enforces the windows time zone policy um and that is on our documentation right now i can try to find a link to add it to the chat um but it is our intent to to release um a few more a few more similar to the built-in policies that are available for um for applying audit right now um, but that that might not happen at the exact same time as the as the um, set scenario GA, but it is on our roadmap. Yeah. And the, the docs would probably make right in assuming the docs wouldn't 
reference any of the community modules, they're likely to just reference because I remember the time zone enforcement one that was a custom module created, wasn't it? It wasn't using the community time zone. It was using just a, you know, some, some standard stuff. Is that likely to be the case as well with all the future enforcement ones? Examples, I should say. Um, yep, I think that I think that it will it will be done in a, in a similar way. So I think I think that's the case. But again, I can I can circle back and just double check that for you, Daniel. There that's will be good. example. Yeah, there will be yeah. example and and the some of them will be very similar to. Uh, to the community ones, let's put it like this. Cool, good to know. Is there more questions? Hi, uh, yeah, I have a question. So, um, so in our our environment, we are specifically reviewing different uh, configuration management tools, and uh, um, one of the big things that we're trying to cover, obviously, is is both Windows and Linux using the same CM tool. It sounds like DSC is moving in that direction. Um, I'm new to these conversations, so I may have missed previous ones where you guys discuss this more. But I am curious, like how how you feel. I mean, it's sounding to me like uh the support for linux is still very much in its infancy is that would that be accurate or how do you feel about that uh i would say under 100 of the work i'm doing with the guest config team is on linux so i wouldn't say that's true anymore okay that's good to know uh joel i believe you have your hands up yeah um I guess my question is, <laughs> what's the chance that we can get you guys to release a package that has the actual same version of what is on these boxes when I do guest config so that I can test in it? Because like the docs say PowerShell 713, when I reach in on the machine and run PWSH out of the GC folder, it's 712. And oh, the remoting thing didn't work. That was a big surprise because I had checked ahead of time that my code worked in PowerShell 7 and nope, didn't work because the remoting didn't work. And the, I, I was going to try to use the storage module, right? To Because it's an Azure box. It's got an extra data disk. I need to mount it somehow. And um, nope, that didn't work because it just doesn't work. <laughs> I don't even... <laughs> And um, a lot of this I could have figured out if I had the exact, like if I had the version of PowerShell that you're shipping into the box available on my box, I could have run that and I would have discovered the remoting thing didn't work before I wrote a whole module around it, right? Yeah, yeah. that's a good point. Yeah. I was just going to say in regards to storage module, that would yeah, I would imagine that would only work with remoting because I think from memory we use um, we use uh, one of the binaries rather than the native storage commandlets in, um, to do a, a bunch of low level stuff that we need to do. Um, so yeah, that would be good to know because then we can put sort of caveats on the on the and the docs to say, hey, this this particular resource won't work in GC um, set mode, enforcement mode, sorry. What is the what is the official term, set mode or enforcement mode? We're going to use enforcement. Um, we're calling it our set scenario to perform enforcement. So the two are kind okay. of used <laughs> cool. somewhat, somewhat interchangeably. I know that's not like the perfect answer. Um, yeah, so there are certain caveats with the versioning that we're able to roll out with our agent, given that there are different standards for both Windows and Linux, um, consistent versioning is something that we're really trying to address in our documentation. Um, and I can make a note of this to see if there is a better solution that um, we could we could possibly address. Um, but I'm afraid I don't have a, a solid answer for you on that one at the moment. But I mean, just just noted. shipping the package, you, yeah, like whatever it is that you're putting into the plugin right right now i'm i'm at the i'm on the edge of okay i'm just gonna have to go in there and zip up the package that's on the vm and bring it over to my laptop so that i can unzip it and run powershell from that folder so that i can get 
a clear idea without having to be remoted into a box the whole day just to run things. And it, and I mean, I can do that, but it it requires a certain level of expertise that I shouldn't need. Right. <laughs> Have you so have you tried the guest configuration module? Um, I do have the guest configuration module, but it's not the key in this case. Both the problems that I ran into, right, were actually due to the version of PowerShell. Yes, but the guest configuration module has uh, the tools for you to invoke the same agent. So when you uh, get that module, you have the agent, which is also used for you to test. So then you can do, uh, you know, similar to a get. DSC configuration, you can do the same thing directly through this module. So then you would have, you know, what will execute this will not be your PowerShell, but it will be directly the agent. So that's how you can do exactly what you asked for. And it's running it in the old version? Yes. Because I thought that I had, well, I'll check. It should be running. It should be running directly when you do the. So in, when you have the guest configuration module, you can yep. do. Uh, I can't remember the exact command, but you can do the yeah, get. Test uh, yes, and you can test it, and that will be running uh, through the agent. Okay. The agent code. Yes. Is there? Is there more questions? I think uh, Jody's got only two minutes left. So hurry up if you have any. Yeah, are you guys, um, I, I have another question. Are you all working on an interface or do you already have one? Um, like I said, I'm, I'm fairly new to the DSC world. So is there a uh, an interface for managing systems and seeing them on a high level? So I don't have to necessarily like create my own dashboard or something of that effect to kick yeah, off so, remote. Yeah, 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 definitely. So. Um, right now, we are working on a more updated um, UI to exist within the Azure portal so that you can examine all the guest configurations that you have assigned to a specific machine, as well as their compliance status, um, both at a config level and a per rule level. Um, and you can see sort of more of a graphical interface of the overall status of your machines. Um, and this status already exists at the subscription level, and you can look at this in the guest assignments page within the Azure port within Azure portal. Um, but these uh, investments into our into our UI are a plan of of the set scenario as well. So that should be um, again releasing in in the spring. Thank you. No problem. I do have to drop, um, but if anybody has any other questions, feel free to either send them to the chat or send them to the Twitter that Gail linked in the chat and um, look forward to speaking again at the at the next monthly meeting. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much for coming. All right, so if you have no more questions for now, then we can uh, cycle back to um, cycle back to Nick's question earlier. So uh, you can unmute maybe and just uh, summarize it again, Nick. Sure, yeah. So essentially what's happening is that we're trying to see if there's a way for us to encrypt uh, just a string. So for example, when we authenticate inside of Microsoft 365 Desire State configuration, you can authenticate using either credentials or service principle. And right now we have application secret defined as a string, but of course, when you go and compile that file, you end up having the secret as plain text in the mob file. So we're trying to see if there's a way to encrypt it when we compile without having it become a PS credential. Because what we're doing for other parameters such as certificate password is we're actually defining it as a PS credential, but then you need to go and create a new object, put, any fake username in there and just use the password piece, which seems to be a workaround more than an actual solution. So I'm just wondering if you folks have um, seen ways of just using the secure string type inside of DSC. But based on what Gail, you were saying previously, you haven't encountered that, right? So PS credential would be my only option. I'll let anyone else answer, but I believe that's correct. Uh, because basically what we're limited with is is the types uh, of data that we can have in DSC. And um, and I, I think we're limited, but well, at least historically we're limited, but what was um, 
uh, serializable with MOF. So uh, you have to create a type, and then some of the types are actually built now in the new PSDSE module. You have the types that are available, and then you have the uh, credential one, and then you have a few others, but they're pretty simple. Like you can have strings, you can have uh, some array of strings. You know, you don't have hash table, you just have, you know, sim instance, array of sim instance kind of things. It's a bit weird. Um, I think as long as we uh, rely on MOF, uh, that's to always going to be an issue, which is one of the reason on MOF in SIM and you know all the management interface uh, type of things. So I believe uh, that's one of the main reason the PowerShell team wants to move away from well, at least that's the the path taken to move away from uh, management interface. So everything SIM, MOF, and and WMI uh, kind of things, uh, so that we use PowerShell classes and then that would probably give us more flexibility. So the short answer is I don't think there's any other workaround. I haven't yeah, seen any other workaround like this. I figured, I, I figured, uh, I just wanted to uh, ask a few folks. So yeah, absolutely. That's my take on it as well. Might as well just park that one for the moment until we can fully implement class-based uh, resources. So, thanks folks. No worries, thanks for asking. Um, I actually, I wanted, uh, Sean, you, you're looking at the, are you also working on the guest configuration um, uh, documentation or are you doing only the PowerShell and PSDSC one? I um, yeah, only the PowerShell side, not the guest configuration. There's, there's different folks that work in that space. Um, yes, there's overlap, but we're more focused on, um, well, creating reference for DSC as it as it works in PowerShell, and then um, the other authors work on the uh, uh, the guest config side. Um, now, with Michael being the uh, lead PM for PowerShell. Maybe we'll have a little more overlap or collaboration, but um, uh, not yet. Okay. Yeah, he's been writing. I, I don't may not maybe not all, but he's been writing a lot of documentation as well for guest config. Yeah, a few months ago now, but uh, but yeah. Um. Yeah. No, it's worth noting that there's some differences, and that's why I wanted to bring it up. There's some differences when you write a DSC resource for guest configuration and when you write a DSC resource for um for dsc pure dsc uh, the the reason is uh, with guest config we are even more limited in the types and uh, the reason is there is uh, is the arm layer because everything guest config goes through arm so um you can't that, like, there's some type of objects that you can't directly use so you have to uh, simplify those types or like transform those types um with for instance, you can't have an array of strings. You have to have one string. So you need to have a um, uh, an item, um, a delimiter, so that you can have you can represent an array of string within one string. So you have to do like some gymnastics when you have your resource. It's well with class-based resource, it's actually pretty simple because you can just extend your base resource, which has the right thing, and then just do the transformation for those, and not having to rewrite the get set test. Um, I can show you some examples at some point, but there's some differences which I believe are documented. I just can't remember where. Um, but if anything else, like if uh, if something's missing, feel free to ask during one of those calls, and then uh, we can go over them. Yeah, I know that's some of the documentation that um, Michael wanted to get here was um, calling out those differences between uh, guest config and local on-premise PowerShell. So um, I unfortunately don't know a whole lot about DSC. Uh, so I'm leaning on Mikey and others to uh, help fill in the gaps here. And we haven't had any DSC writing resources in quite a while. So we've leaned heavily on Michael Green to to provide what documentation we have. Yeah, no worries. I'm yes, I can I can share the some information if needed uh, for this call. Um, there's a question. I think uh, you can use this if you need an empty username. Okay, 
Okay, that was an answer to Nick, uh, which is crucial. Well, yeah, but the question was about. Yeah, it's more specific to the resource. So yes, that can work from a string, but then. So yes, so that's the that's an alternative answer to Nick is you can just use a string and then just assume it's a secure string. Uh, the problem here is you have less validation, especially uh, compilation time. So I guess that's also why uh, Nick wanted to make sure that it could be used as a secure string. Possible, or you could, yeah. There's many ways I, to work around this, but maybe not the best. I'm not sure if this is possible either, but has anybody looked at um, secrets management, using secrets management modules to do? It um, might be it might be tricky to do that because then you never know what the uh, target, what the managed node will be connected to. So depending yeah. on the use case. And yes, it might be tricky. The problem is yeah, it, it doesn't translate as well as if it was just a secure string. But that that's a good thing, like for, for any type of resource. Maybe sometimes it would be better to, if they didn't need the um they didn't need the credentials directly and they could just use secret management yeah. to abstract this away. That would be the ideal methodology was we don't pass the credential and the MOF at all. It's all abstract used in a you know key vault or whatever it is that you're you've got and using an identity of the machine to access that secret. But we looked into that for a couple of uh, for things like the certificate resource, but that was required changes to DSC to do this. And I wanted to highlight a few things. So I discussed about the slight the differences between um, between pure DSC resource and the DSC resource that needs to happen for guest configuration. So uh, this is one of the modules I'm working on, and uh, I'll try to find a good example. I think. Um, Uh, we can have maybe this. No, that's yeah, maybe that one, maybe this one. So this one, NX group. This is um, so this is a DSC resource, as you can see. It's a class-based resource. This is for Linux. And if you can't see my screen because it's not clear, let me know. I will just try to make it slightly bigger. There we go. So. Uh, this is this is my DSC resource class, and that's purely DSC resource. And the this other one is actually uh, using uh, extending, I would say, um, this class. And this one is specific for guest configuration. That's why I just prefixed it to uh, GC underscore just to make it clear. But you can see that this one only accepts string, and because it extends it, uh, it also accepts the other these other ones. But guest configuration cannot uh, cannot use or assign array of strings as we have here members to include and then members to exclude or members so for those i need to create new property uh, yeah new properties for the resource uh, to be used in guest config and then uh, basically the only thing i'm doing is when i create this class i would just automatically use a, a separator here for instance i would just join them when i create it and then um, then it will update those properties every time. And then when we uh, call the get, it will just work because this one is referencing the class. So that's just the workaround to say, well, you don't have to write everything. This is just um, creating, like changing from an array of, no, sorry, from a single string with a, a separator to an array of strings. And then uh, the get is just calling the get from the parent. The test is just calling in a similar way, and then the set is also calling this one. So there's no like this one is only 70 lines, and most of them is just uh, changing from an array from a string to an array of string. Hopefully that is a bit of an example. And um, basically, complex types cannot be set through guest configuration. So it should be string int. All of those work, but array of string would not work. See, that's clear. All right, is there more questions? 
and I can't see my screen. Uh, let me just no, there's no more questions in the chat. If anything, just feel free to stop me. Um, I wanted to show you today. Oops, sadly. I wanted to show you today just uh, one of the way you can test. Um, you can test your packages. And uh, the way to do that, and I've always said that on, I've already done some demos and others have too, is using Test Kitchen. What is Test Kitchen? Test Kitchen is, um, it's a tool, it's an ecosystem maybe that used to be developed by the, um, by the chef community to test their chef resources. But it's so generic that you can use uh, for other things. You can use whether you use Puppet modules or DSC resources. Um, you the, the principle behind Kitchen is you spin up a VM, you copy everything you need on the VM, you uh, make sure it's set up the way you want, and then you execute your test. In this case, I want to execute test tests. So the way to do that is you will start by defining your kitchen environment in a kitchen uh, definition. What I need to have on my machine is I need to have uh, Ruby because it's based on Ruby, and then the gems required for this. So in this case, I need the Azure RM uh, Ruby gem, which is the driver to say, hey, I'm going to create VMs on this platform. But you could create that on, um, say, AWS, or you could create that on a vSphere environment. Same principle. You spin up a VM based on an image, hopefully an image you have access to. And um, when you created the, VH, the, the image, then it will connect to that VM through a transport. And the transports are SSH when you're on Linux and WinRM when you're on Windows. It's not very flexible in terms of, well, I want to be on Windows, but I want to be SSH. That doesn't work. And I don't know if there's a workaround, but not that I am aware of. But we can still work with it. Um, in this case, I say, well, this is my Azure RM definition. Oh, sorry. So, so what's need, required? So the Azure RM gem is what you need, and then you need to have uh, because I'm using Pesta, so I need to have the kitchen Pesta uh, gem, and then I believe that's the only one I need in this case because for the provisioner, I'm only using the shell, uh, which is just using whatever shell is installed on the machine. So the principle is you have a driver and you say, hey, I want to use Azure to spin up a VM. And then I want to use a shell to configure the VM in a state that I want to test. And then I want to verify this by running my tests. And in this case, it's my PESTA test. So I want to run the kitchen PESTA. I want to use the kitchen PESTA um, uh, verifier. And then I will define, you know, what what's in there. And then for all of those, I want to run all of these tests in uh, specific platforms. And the platforms is, you know, what type of VM you want to run. So in this case, I have uh, Ubuntu here, but I have also a CentOS and I have a Debian 10. So these are the ones I want to test on. But to create them, I can also define some um, some specific configuration. In this case. Uh, I specify exactly which uh, image I want to use. And then I have some uh, lifecycle hooks. That means uh, at different stage, you can execute commands remotely or you can execute them uh, remotely means on the VM you created or locally, that means on your current um, environment. The one you're calling it from, you're running kitchen from. So in this case, what are we doing? We're just creating a base image, which is available to everyone, and then we installing PowerShell. And so we're installing the package, and then you know installing PowerShell, installing also tree, sometimes good for troubleshooting. And then uh, we do some other things. In this case, I just enable the experimental feature, the PS subsystem plugin model. So um, that's one, and then we do something similar, but obviously a little bit different for CentOS, but installing PowerShell is what we're doing. And again, for Debian 10, slightly different, but we also, uh, we're also installing uh, PowerShell there. So we have PowerShell and we have the three machines with a relatively same state, which is the base configuration. Um, in this case, we also set up, um, in this case, we just set up uh, the machine, like the, the user account to, be allowed to sudo without a password. I'll pass the details if you know uh, if you know Linux, that will make sense. And basically, you can just 
spin up those VM and then you have three types of VM you can run the same tests on. But after that, you have different test suites. So you can run, you can create a test matrix where you will have different VMs uh, as we've seen before, but for different tests. So you will create one Ubuntu VM for one test suite, the GC packages one here, and then create another uh, Ubuntu VM to run this other test suite, which is functions. So like this, you create a VM and then you will have many machines that you can uh, run your tests on. In this case, let me show you that. If I run kitchen list, and it will take some time, Ruby is a bit slow on Windows, and I'm running Windows. But if you run this, um, there we go, you have the list the list of the VMs that can be created. And you can see uh, there's actually one which is already set up, but the others are not created yet. So when we have this, um, you can see I have the GC packages. GC packages is the test suite. Uh, Ubuntu 18.04 is, um, is the platform that we define. But if I look at the other test suites, I have also the functions here. So from there, uh, I have created my VM, and you can see that the last action was set up, and the last error was kitchen action failed. So the action failed because I tried to converge. Oops, I will show you. Converge, and then I just want to do one, otherwise it will do all of them. And you can just copy this. That's the one. But then I could I could just put uh, convert GC packages Ubuntu, and that would be only that would make only one. It's a it's a regex. So what it's doing here, it, it's preparing and um, looking at, OK, are you set up to um, query everything you need? So it's going to go and ask. Um, it should be already created, so it has some information cached in these files. And then it will go and talk to Azure and then say, hey, do I have a VM with this name? Yes. And then it will uh, log in to the machine because he knows the password. It will just SSH into this machine. And then it will run uh, something. And in this case, it runs uh, this, which is the, uh, the the script that does the converge. And my script is defined in my test here. And I have kitchen here. That's the provisioning script. It's doing pretty much nothing. So if you remember, I said use the shell provisioner. So the shell provisioner on a Linux machine is most likely to be whatever is defined in your environment. And in this case, I just use the shebang for uh, uh, PWSH, and then it will just run. Um, it will just run this very simple PowerShell script to make sure every modules that I want are installed. So, oops. So you can see. So at this time, the converge worked. Everything's fine. It returned. It finished. I've only done the converge. So now, if I want to run some tests. I should be able to run a uh, kitchen verify, verify. So I can show you that that doesn't really matter. And then I can run verify. And know what is going to happen. So it will take all my tests, package them up, zip them up, and then uh, copy them over SSH to this remote machine, and then use Pesto on this remote machine to install everything. So we live, and then that's going to fail. There's a reason for that, but that's going to fail. And you will see uh, the output is Pester telling me, oh yeah, this test failed, this test failed, this test failed. Come on. every So it's uh, zipping up the file and then sending it over SSH. You see this is the login output from uh, this remote machine. So it's installing Pester. That's a, so if Pester is not installed on a remote machine, it will do it. So I created it just before uh, the DSC community call. That's why Pester wasn't installed yet. And it's a bit slow. So uh, can this process run also on a dev container? So the so, little kitchen verify and converge and so on. Can this so also what? Run? Yeah, sorry. So what do you want to run? So basically you run that. So in this case, you run on VMs because guest configuration is really made to um, to manage VM. Usually you don't use DSC running at least as an agent on a, on a container. So the goal here is to really reproduce the environment you want to manage exactly the same way. So if you have a custom image, maybe that's what you want to test with. 
the, your custom image. Um, would you be able to run that in a, in a container? Um, I think the principle would be the same. So yes, it depends on the driver you're using and what you're spinning up. So no, maybe. I'm not, uh, no, I'm not meaning spinning up the Azure resources. So um, putting the, um, the run kitchen verify, you're running it on your local machine at the moment. Can yes. This be, can this be putting into a dev container? So where, where, where Ruby is prepared and so on? Yes. Runs faster, for example. Yes, and, okay. and then you can also run that from um, you can run that from your Azure DevOps pipeline, and then it mm -hmm. would do the same pretty much. Oh, okay. Thank you. So as you can see, these are my tests running, and then it's uh, so you can recognize the um, the sorry the pester the pester um, output on the pester output saying yeah this is not working nothing is working so the reason it's not working is simply because um, I haven't built my uh, guest configuration package. So when I do this, it will rebuild everything I need. And uh, it's building my module. So it's based on, hey, Joel's uh, build module to start with. So what's happening is it's building all my sources into a module, which you can find here and extols. And then it's also building the MOFs I need for the guest configuration packages. So that's where the guest configuration package starts with. You just create a configuration which then compile your MOF, uh, pretty simple in this one. And then from these ones, um, we start, uh, we, we create the packages. So we compile from the MOF, we compile the, the guest configuration package, which is the MOF plus every module it requires to work in the guest configuration agent. And I have an error because obviously, I think I know why actually. Ah, uh, because of. Uh, okay, hold on. Ah, uh, yeah, that's another one. Let me just try to. Yeah, because demos on uh, that's something I work on, so that's probably why this one failed, because I work on something. Uh, guest configuration package. And I uh, will just for now uh, give me one second. Let's do that for now. Yes, let's try again. Sorry for that. Demo gods. I don't want to troubleshoot that with everyone watching. Too stressful. So this everything here is based on sampler. So if you're using sampler, you can do something similar. So if you have in sampler in your source folder, you can uh, simply create your GC uh, GC packages um, uh, folder, and then you create your guest configuration package name here, and then within that you have a config file. So that's a bad example. That's also a bad example. Come on, I want in simple. Here we go. Um, we this will be documented but that's your configuration script and then just based on this configuration script that's the only thing you need to build automatically your guest configuration package from the package you will be, need to create policies but the first step is to create the package so then uh, it's just using this dsc resource and then you can test the package using the guest configuration module which i will show in a second um, so this has been created so now i will have in my output, I have my guest configuration packages here, and that's the zip files which contain the MOF that we built and the required modules for this. So now we will be able to run uh, the tests. So kitchen verify package Ubuntu in this case, and know that those exist. Hopefully, I will have at least uh, fewer errors. Fingers crossed. So again, it sees like things have changed a little bit. So it repackages um, everything you need to send over SSH to uh, the remote node. The remote node should have uh, should need to unzip this and then run my pester script. It takes a, a little bit of time, obviously, because you're connecting through SSH to that remote node. There we go. We logged in into that remote machine. 
can see that we've installed 722, but that's not the one used by by my test because I use, as I said to uh, Joel earlier today, um, we are we are using the guest configuration agent from the guest configuration module, so then it will be tested the same way as if it was running from the agent. And I can show you in the meantime. Um, if you go to my ask, okay, so that's the output. I show you the required modules. And then the guest configuration module is this one. And then uh, within that, you have the bin. And then you have the agents, which are zipped in this module when you install that module. Oh, here we go. So you can see that now it's running my tests. So, first of all, the package should be available. That's good. It's work. That means it found like it found that the package uh, because it wasn't compiled before, so it would not be copied over. And then it's running my test. So let's have a quick look at the tests. You know Pesta, then you will understand the tests. Uh, in this case, pretty straightforward. So you can see it's green now, better than earlier. So what's happening? I just have different testers, I, different tests. This one is just making sure the package is there. Everything's fine. And then these are the comments I was mentioning earlier about um, testing if the package does what is meant to be doing. So when you add uh, in the DSC in PowerShell 5.1, uh, get uh, DSC configuration status. Now it's slightly different. We have get guest configuration package compliance status. And that's to make sure, okay, are we compliant or not? And that's for the guest configuration packages. So when the zip files I've shown you are, are the guest configuration packages, and we're just saying, okay, give me the results, and that gives you something very similar to guest, uh, sorry, get guest, uh, sorry, get DSC configuration status, and you have the details of which resources is compliant or not compliance. But in this case, I just want to make sure there's no reasons for non-compliance. So we're running all of those tests and every time we're just asking directly uh, for the agent to run those DST resources and then return us uh, the result. And then we making sure we are asserting that, you know, we have no problems and it's the compliance status is false in this case because that's what we expect or true if that's what we want. Any questions so far? Nope. Either you completely lost or it kind of maybe makes sense. <laughs> what did I do? Oh, I did do B dollar true. Shame on me. Sorry, can't help us. Can't help myself. Nah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> I didn't even notice. Code review. All right. Live code review. <laughs> It did pass, so yeah. But that that one, I think the be true is yeah, that might be the worst. But that's fine. I'll fix. Thank you. All right. So you can see that. So that goes forward. I just want uh, to wait, but I'm probably not going to wait. So every time we're doing this at the moment, it's taking some time because it needs to uh, every time install the package because I'm installing one package after the other. So every time it needs to unzip, do this, clean up. I want I want to make sure I clean it up uh, for the agent. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so when it's finished, it should be soon. And then when it's finished, it would have tested all the packages uh, that I wanted to test. So they've been working fine. And then it will return. And then I can uh, say to Kitchen, hey, Kitchen, destroy my VM. And then it will go uh, over Azure and say, hey, remove um, all of the elements from, that, uh, from this um, uh, VM that you created. And that usually it's a, it's a, everything's put into one resource group, so then it's easy to delete. So if I do kitchen, and then that was my uh, GC. Technically, I could do just everything. It will do everything. I had only one, so you will see only one there. But uh, it will try to do everything, and it will tell you that one has nothing, and this one has been destroyed. There we go. Destroying GC package GP2. I think it's even slower because I have Teams and sharing my screen. This is really slow. 
So it says, hey, Israel is environment, destroying resource group. So you see that's the name of my resource group. Oops, and then it tries to do the other one. It, is, it just says just finish because nothing was created there. And there we go. Uh, we've created everything. And then if we want, uh, so we can do, you know, kitchen verify package Ubuntu, or we can just say, just do everything in there. And then if we do all of them, and depending on your configuration, I think by default, it does that on four threads, but basically you can do that and it will um, in different threads. So concurrently, it will do all of them. Uh, I can't remember if it's four. I can't remember what's the configuration by default, but otherwise you can say, hey, make sure you do on four threads, uh, not 45, but four threads. Or maybe if you do by default, it will try to do all of them at once. So that's the basics. So remember the basics is you can create the VM if you don't want it to be set up. If you want to run your setup script, in this case, the provisioning.ps1, you say, well, converge. And then if you want to verify, run the pester test, it's uh, verify, kitchen verify. And then when you're done with this, you can just say, destroy. That's the commands you use. And that's the only one you use usually. Sometimes, we also use one, which is login. And usually that's a bad sign. That means you want to directly SSH into the machine and uh, just make sure that, you know, uh, making sure that um, uh, the VM, you know, something failed and you don't know why and the output wasn't good enough of your tests. So maybe you just want to remote in and test manually with the module, maybe the configuration and making sure that works. Uh, so in this case, I don't have any things, but I can do create GC pack page, and then you would, and then I'll show you after that how to look at. Is there any question? One quick question, Gail. Um, is it possible with Test Kitchen? So you need a, as part of a the, uh, an integration test, you actually need a second VM spun up. For example, uh, if we're testing an iSCSI um, connection, you need an iSCSI server. Could you potentially spin up, you know, the both the VM to host the iSCSI server, and then the the second VM where you're going to test the client, and you're going to run that, you know, you run your resource tests on that client. So that's something Test Kitchen does or can do. There's more than one answer. Uh, Test Kitchen itself. Not really, but you have many ways to work around this. Um, the ways to work, work around this, the first one is um, you have the lifecycle hooks. So remember when you have the platforms here on for one, you can say, well, uh, run something else. You know, when you finish creating it, run something else. Or maybe before you create it, create this other one. So you have this, uh, which is not the best tool in this case for, for that job. Um, if we talk about Azure, so specifically to um, Azure RM, you have ways to say, well, uh, we can have another ARM template and then uh, deploy this ARM template. So you have ways to deploy it in a certain uh, network, like you can customize it a lot. So basically you can you can probably have saying, um, you know, you have your image or everything ready for your iSCSI server and say, hey, deploy this template first and then spin up my VM, and then my VM will know how to communicate and how to uh, configure based on your on your test on your uh, DSC configuration. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense, yeah. So that's specific to the Azure RM. So if you want to do that for Azure, that's fine. If you want to do that for AWS, that would be a different driver, so different configuration. And if you want to do that for vSphere environment, that would be also slightly different. But you can do that, I think I've, I know I've tried something similar, but very simple on Azure and on with the Azure RM driver and on uh, vSphere. So yes, it's doable. Okay, good, good to know. The 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 third work around I would say is uh, because you can have different platforms, so you can have um you can have two type of tests, so you can have you know the two test suites. And one if function in GC package in this case, sometimes what I do is I, I just use one of those to be, you know, if you need to have another server, if you have several server, I would have different uh, roles if you want. 
and then I would make sure that I spin up one of those and one of those, you know, in pair when needed. That's a workaround. It's not really designed for that, but that can be used for that, and that can be very powerful, especially when you work things out. But then you have to do, you have to think about it manually. If you use the Azure RM uh, driver, that's just completely automated. You just need to write the ARM for it. Yeah, I'm gotcha. complete. Any more questions? No. So I'll, I'll go back again uh, just to show you those things. Um, the password here, I do something a bit more complex. You don't need that, and actually you don't need any of those. Usually it, does, it handles it automatically. I do this because of the basic configuration of the Ubuntu, uh, sorry, the Debian 10, um, because it's not in the sudo as file. Um, you see, we need to do something like this. So you see that one is commented. That's not the actual password. Uh, the password is still generated, but basically we need to be able to pipe the password for sudo to be able to change the file. So that's the command we're doing. So making sure that uh, we're working around to grab this password, pass it to sudo to be able to uh, change the file. And then you can see uh, adding adding this line for this user in the sudo as file. So th that's why we need to uh, capture the environment variable with a machine pass, which is created like this. So this is Ruby. You don't want to do that, but sometimes you have to. So it's still very flexible. If only it was PowerShell, but you know, you can't have everything. Um, and obviously uh, those ones, so I'm working specific, specifically on Ubuntu, CentOS, and Debian at the moment, but uh, you could do something similar, uh, obviously for Windows 2019. I used to do 2012 R2. I don't even know if the image still exists. Uh, probably not available anymore, I think. Even 2016 might not be available, so we're not. Yeah, I don't think it. I don't know. Yeah, it's 2019, 2022. I think it's so. yeah. Those are the only two images we test on. But but you know if if you know Azure, you know that you can build your own images and then and then you can test on those images. Yep. And uh, something to note for the test suites, you can override some information like for the verifier and you can say, hey, make sure you copy some things. So in this case, when I run the GC packages uh, test suites, I make sure that I copy those folders around. So I'm making sure that uh, I have all my packages so that I can test them, which is what was missing when everything was read. And I make sure I can copy. I also copy the NX Tools module, even if it's included in the package. When I want to troubleshoot this version of NX Tools, I just do import module NX Tools when I do a kitchen login. So if I go, ah, I had an issue there. What did I do? That's the kind of problem. Yeah, I don't want. Oh, okay. That's a connection issue. I don't know if I, if it will. So if I do a kitchen login and it was a GC package, not sure it's going to work because it didn't really create it. As it, it wasn't successful creating it. Oh yeah, it says, it says I'm here. So let me grab the password. So that's what my little bit of script is doing, creating this file. It wouldn't be there for you. It would be within these logs, I guess, in the in this file actually. You can find it in, in this is automatically created by uh, Test Kitchen. It gives you the information of you know what has been created, and the password is the same here. Don't hack my VM uh, for now. So that's so you see I'm uh, oops sorry I'm on my my remote VM there. Well, uh, I can't type. Who am I? There we go. I am Azure, and then. That's my VM name. Okay, so I'm looking and then I can do sudo stuff. But you get the idea. No, I can go, uh, actually I can do uh, research in this case, and then um, everything will be a bit. Uh, oh no, I did create, uh, yeah, I did create and I was, I didn't install the package yet because my, because it wasn't because it wasn't working. If you remember uh, this, I had some issue. Probably delay. It just timed out. 
because he tried here. So SSH connection failed, failed, failed. So he tried. So I could try to converge again and then that might work. Anyway, exit. I can't type. Any question? Nope. Hope that helps. If you want to test whether it's Windows based resource or Linux based resource for PowerShell 5.1 or for uh, PowerShell 7.2 or guest configuration, uh, Test Kitchen can really help you. If you don't even write guest configuration, you just want to test modules that you write. It's also a very good uh, use case because then you can have a clean environment. You can test things on, and uh, when you finished, you know you just kitchen destroy, and then your VM is gone. You're not paying for it, and you've uh, tested your thing. And I know actually that the, um, the the chocolatey guys are using Test Kitchen as well to test uh, some of the chocolatey, uh, I believe, packages or maybe some tools uh, they're doing. No more question. If that's the case, then we can stop the recording. Thanks, Gail. That was a good demo.